Okay, so we're going to do something uh, a little bit different. We are going to take a Juniper network configuration example and using the specific configuration that that document provides, have it converted into a uh, Jinja2 template and from there uh, use that template in order to produce a, a specific configuration dynamically and load that onto the Juniper, onto the Juniper device. So what we're looking at right now is a section from that PDF file that describes the uh, process that we're going to go into, which is how to create uh, two port mirroring sessions on EX4200 switch. So in this example, there are a number of hosts and they're plugged into the first 10 ports. There's some kind of loopback cable here that it's showing. And then there are two traffic analyzers that are hooked up. Um, and each traffic analyzer is going to be uh, analyzing traffic from five of these ports. So that's the basic setup and the idea here. Okay, so now what you're looking at is uh, my GitHub page, and I have a repo called NCE, and in here are a collection of these network configuration examples that uh, myself and some other people have produced. And what you can see here is there's one called port mirroring, and inside this directory, when we look at it, uh, you can see that we have produced a Jinja2 file, which is the template, and some sample data variables that we've stored in what's called a YAML file, and, uh, and even a little bitty piece of Python code that will you know, merge the data and the template together to produce a sample output mm -hmm. file. So what we're going to first do is we're going to download this repository onto my Linux server. And the way that you do that is if you were to click on the network configuration example repo and down here you can see the, uh, the URL. You can just simply uh, take that URL and uh, copy it. And then inside your uh, Linux, I'm going to go into my temp directory here and say get clone, which is how you copy something. And in this case, uh, I want this to be Jeremy Shulman slash NCE dot get. And so that is the process by which you download uh, a repo. So now you can see there's a directory here. And in that directory are all those files. And then I'm going to go into this port mirroring directory here. And you can see that I've got uh, some of those files right from that repo. Okay, now what we're looking at is the Datavars YAML file that came with the repository. And you can see what a, a YAML file, you always know a YAML file because it starts with these three dashes here. And what a YAML file really gives you is the ability to express um, structured data in, in more or less a human readable form. And uh, if you were to compare this with some other data formats, you know, XML is, is one that, um, you know, is, is fairly common, but XML is really hard to read, and uh, for at least for human. Uh, and this is a really nice way to say, look, I've got a variable, it's called host ports, and it is a list, and we know that it's a list because lists start with a little dash, right? So we can see that that's a list, and we've got a list of interfaces here, obviously. So these are the host ports that represent, um, you know, the physical ports where the hosts are connected to. The variable names are completely arbitrary. Right? These variable names you'll see represented in the Jinja2 template because that's how we kind of merge the data and the template together. If you look at the host ports VLAN variable, here we can see that this is not a list, but it's actually uh, what, what Python would call a dictionary, or what some people would call a hash. Right? Host ports VLAN has a sub-attribute or a property called name and another property called VLAN ID. And again, you know, these, these things are completely arbitrary that, that I chose. You can even create complex uh, data structures or, or, or structured data. For example, the mirror IP list to ports is essentially a dictionary of two interface names, and each of those interfaces has a list of IP addresses. Right? So if we go back and we look at the uh, configuration example, Okay, and now we're looking at that configuration example. You can see that there are these hosts with these IP addresses 10.0.0.1, 2, 3, going all the way up to 10.0.0.10. And so going back to the data file here, you can see that we've got hosts 
you know, dot one through five, we want that traffic mirrored to port Diggy 0013 and traffic from ports or from host ending in dot six through dot 10 to go to Diggy 0014. So what's really nice about this idea or this concept is we're disaggregating the specific data, you know, that we want in, in this case, you know, this particular set of data from a template that could be reused again and again and again in a generic way. So, you know, I always like to say, you know, network engineers, you know, shouldn't be made to become programmers, but they should think like programmers and disaggregating, you know, specific configuration examples uh, into a template and a data uh, file is a good way to do that, right? We're not talking about writing code, you know, theoretically here, we're just talking about disaggregating templates from data. So hopefully that kind of makes sense. Right, okay, now what we're looking at is I've split my editor window so you can see on the left side the data, and then on the right side what you're looking at is a Jinja2 template that is a Juniper specific configuration, or actually a Juniper configuration that has been marked up in Jinja2 uh, template format. So let's take a little section here, for example. In Junos there's an interfaces section and what this block of, of Jinja is doing right here, it's saying, I want to do a loop for every one of my host ports, right? And for every one of my host ports, I want to declare a block of configuration, right? And in this case, you can see that this is Juniper specific unit zero family Ethernet switching. And essentially what it's doing is it's assigning the host ports VLAN to the specific interface. So you can see here, I've got these 10 ports and they're all going to be assigned into this particular VLAN. Now, if I wanted to have, you know, 10 more ports in my data set, I'm not changing the template, I'm just changing my data file. All right, so that's a, that's a quick little example. I'm not going to go through the entire Jinja file, um, but uh, it is Jinja2, and there's a really great website uh, that talks about Jinja and how to do uh, template markup. Jinja2 happens to be the standard for template uh, rendering in, in Python. So you'll see it very often in, uh, in pretty much everything related to Python. Okay, now what I've done is I've put the rendered or the, the completed merged file, the actual file of configuration that is the merge of the data in the template. And, and you can see this on the left-hand side of the screen. Okay. And so this is actually the file that is the specific configuration that would get loaded onto the Juniper device. And you can see that there's a lot of stuff in here that um, really is not specific to the data at hand, but is very specific to the Juniper uh, configuration itself. So you can see that there are uh, ACLs that are being produced that look for specific host name or specific IP addresses and use that to um, focus that traffic to specific interfaces. And again, if we look at the data of ours, if somebody was looking and producing this data of ours file, they don't know or need to know anything specifically about the Junos configuration, right? They just know, they know what they want. They don't need to know how it becomes the specific Juniper configuration. That's the function of the template, right? So again, separating the what from the how is a concept that uh, you know, we picked up from the DevOps guys, especially around like what, what's going on with Puppet and Chef and all these other uh, really cool IT tools. So the question is, is well, how does the data vars and the template get merged together? Okay, so let's take a look at that. Okay, so now what we're looking at is on my Linux box, I'm in my directory here, and we can see that this sample file, uh, which I was showing you in my editor, I'm gonna remove that. Okay. Now, in, in the repository, there's a uh, little Python program called prender. So I could say, you know, Python prender. And what that's going to do is just going to take the, the, the data and the, and the template and merge them together. And I'm going to output that to a file called sampleoutput.conf. Okay. And if I look at that sampleoutput.conf, that is, again, the specific, you know, Juniper configuration. All right, I'm going to remove that file again because what I'd actually like to do is use the Python, uh, the, the Junos PyEZ library to do that, that merging for us and simultaneously push that configuration to a device. So the idea is, is that using the, the framework, 
you don't have to do all the little bitty steps of doing the hard work that the framework should do that for you. All right. All right, so now the fun bits. We're gonna uh, start up Python 2.7, and again, we're gonna import our uh, device and create a device to my ex2 host and open the configuration. Okay, so again, I've got facts here and I can see what this uh, device is. I can see that it's an ex4200, great. So the two things I need to do, first is I need to load that YAML file into Python, okay? I wanna show you how this is done, you know, programmatically through Python just because I think it's a good thing to know how to do. Um, there is a library called YAML, right? And let's say I wanna create, um, I wanna load these, these uh, variables into something called uh, myvars. And so you would say yaml.load, and that's gonna come from a file called datavars.yml and you want to just read all that at once, and boom, you've just read all that data in. And if I wanted to pretty print that to the screen so you could see it, I would say uh, from pretty print, import pretty print as pp, and say my bars. And here you can see that we've just simply loaded the YAML file and it's now a native Python structure, really what, what is called the dictionary, okay? Not a lot of magic, nothing specific to Juniper there, but I just wanted to show you that. But I've got it in a variable called my bars. Okay, so how do I take this variable and take that template, merge it together, and push the configuration to the device? So there's something in the library, uh, a set of load config utilities. So I'm gonna say from Juniper Junos utils uh, config, import the config utility widget. And I can bind that to the device. So I can say dev bind, and here I can pick any variable I want. I'm just gonna say CFG, and if I, and if I associate it that way, I now have something that is bound to that device. If I wanted to look at all of the things in that library, I could say uh, help on that. And you can see that I can do a commit, commit check, do a diff, print the difference, do a load, lock, unlock, rollback. Basically, most of the things that you would normally want to do from the CLI are completely uh, provided through this API. And what we want to do is we want to do the load function, right? I want to load some changes. So if I said help dev config load, this is basically going to give you help on how to load uh, anything you want. You can see that we can load configuration based on a text format, a series of set commands, even if you're doing structured XML. There's a lot of uh, things in here that we're gonna uh, take advantage of. In this case, we're going to pull uh, a template. So this is a template path variable, which we're gonna use, okay? And then the other thing that we need to provide is the template variables, okay? So the way that would work is we would say dev config load and then template path and here we're giving it the name of the file in this case this is a uh, port mirror dot j2 and then the template uh, the template vars is uh, from the uh, vars uh, file my vars and then we have to tell the library which format this this stuff is in because the ending of this file is dot j2 and so it doesn't you know the library doesn't know what j2 means so I'll say the format is equal to text. Now, if the file actually ended in .conf, it would know that it was a text format. If it ended in .xml, it would know that it was XML. But here, I can specifically say what is the format of this uh, configuration. Now, it has just completely rendered the, configure, the specific configuration and pushed it down to the device. And I know that this was okay because if it wasn't okay, I would actually see an exception thrown up here and it said, you know, hey, this was bad. But I know that this was okay. And if I wanted to look at the actual patch difference, I could say, uh, print me the diff. And this is actually the same thing as show pipe compare on the Juno CLI. You can see that you're actually getting the uh, what's going on here. Now, so that's loaded, it hasn't committed it. If I wanted to, to do a, a commit check, I could say commit check. And this is going to you know do what you would expect and says, okay, this would actually commit. If I, if I do commit, if I actually said dev cfg commit and I hit return here, it would actually make that active. But I don't want to do that. I want to roll back or discard this stuff. So I could say, uh, let's roll back this configuration. And again, now if I did dev cfg uh, print me the diff, I'll see you know there's actually no difference at this point. 
So uh, this is how you can uh, take advantage of Jinja 2 template building, disaggregation of data, uh, data for specific templates. And again, you know, this is the underpinning in the library. And if you want to get really fancy or complicated and do something very sophisticated, uh, we have uh, some Junos mod or some Ansible modules that that you know basically wrap around this framework. And uh, you can do some very sophisticated things uh, combining these two techniques together. So uh, this was a little bit of a longer video cast. I hope uh, it was informative and uh, useful, and I hope you enjoyed it.